Endocrinology is the study of hormonal systems. A hormone is a chemical messenger which is secreted by certain cells in the body to affect the function of more distant cells. The most important part of the definition of a hormone is that it is secreted into the blood. Hormones are often secreted by special glands, often known as ductless glands because they don't have tubes leading from them as they're not secreting into the outside world, but into the bloodstream. Ductless glands include the adrenal gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, pituitary gland, ovaries and testes. However, many hormones are secreted by organs which have other functions, including the kidney, heart and even the fat cells. Levels of hormones in the blood are very low, often measured in picomoles per milliliter, but that's enough to activate their receptors on target tissues. Hormone levels can be increased or decreased according to circumstances, and so can levels of receptors on cell membranes, which represents another means of changing hormonal effects. By changing where receptors are found, you can change what tissues respond to a given hormone. There are also often several different types of receptors for the same hormone, with different affinities. Hormones might work on one type of receptor at extremely low concentrations, but at higher concentrations the same hormone might work on different receptors on the same tissue, and that might change the overall effect. What a hormone does can therefore depend on its concentration and also on what other hormones are around at the same time since the other hormones might be changing the receptors that are available. Almost all hormones are secreted with a certain circadian rhythm. This means that levels are higher or lower at different times of the day, the exact pattern being characteristic of a particular hormone. One hormone might be at its highest level in the early morning, another just after you've gone to bed. The exact pattern depends on what the hormone is being used for. The body anticipates what would be needed at a certain time of day and releases hormones in advance to get you ready for that. For example, you might want your blood sugar levels to rise just before you get up in the morning so you're ready for action. For predictable daily events, having a circadian rhythm is faster and more efficient as a way of organising the body than simply waiting for the event to occur and responding to it when it does. If you look carefully at hormone levels over the course of the day, you often find that they're released in brief pulses, those pulses being higher amplitude or more frequent at times when the overall level of the hormone in the blood needs to be higher. Pulsatility in hormone release is thought to be important because receptors often down-regulate if exposed to continuous high levels of hormone. It's as if they get bored and wander off. By presenting hormones in pulses, that doesn't happen. So most hormones are produced in a pulsatile way, and overall levels show a circadian rhythm. But of course, if a particular event occurs which demands an increase in hormone production, levels can be increased on top of that baseline. Hormone levels have to be carefully controlled. If that control goes wrong and hormone levels get too high or too low, this can lead to clinical problems. For example, a thyroid hormone affects your metabolic rate. Hypothyroidism is where levels of thyroid hormone in the blood are too low, and this can leave you feeling sluggish and cold. In hyperthyroidism, levels of thyroid hormone are too high, and this can leave you feeling hot and excitable. So it's important that hormone levels remain within the appropriate range, adjustable according to circumstance, and we're going to be picking up on that theme as we proceed.